We just got back from the massive Kalahari Water Park and Resort, which is just north of Austin, about 30 minutes from the airport. And it has a convention center, a hotel, a giant water park, 14 different restaurants and snack options, shops, a salon, a fitness center, bowling lanes, escape rooms, a fun ropes course, massive arcade, VR games and rides, all of that stuff, and it sounds amazing. But is it worth going to? That is the question that we're going to answer. So let's get into it. We took our trip to Kalahari in the Texas cold of February, looking to have some fun at the indoor water park. So we booked the big three bedroom presidential suite to have a plenty of room because we were meeting our family up there. And we wanted everyone to be able to stay in the same room together, but I'll get to the room review a little bit later. So let's start with the water park, which is what we did. After we checked in, we put on the bathing suits and went straight to the indoor water park. Now keep in mind, they lead you past the ice cream shop and through the giant arcade to make sure your kids get to get excited about the water park or about the arcade because they're going to bug you about the arcade later. They make you walk right through it to get to the water park. So good positioning by Kalahari, uh, great design. And then as you enter the water park, you're going to go through this big, cool room and they have paid storage lockers available in there. And then boom, you walk in to the largest indoor water park in America, all 223,000 square feet of it. So let's break down the water park. You have a giant rectangle of a room with different rides and slides split up into different sections, as you can see on the map. There are water slides and attractions all along the edges of the room with seating, chairs, the Zulu grill, and all that stuff in the middle of the room. And there were plenty of seats and chairs on a quiet Friday when we were there, so it wasn't too hard to find a place to sit. So it's somewhat organized by age group with the little kid stuff off to the left. As soon as you walk in, you look to the left. That's like the little kids area. And so if you have smaller kids, I'd say six or seven or so and under, I would head to the left as soon as you walk in. Over there, you're gonna have Splashtown Safari, which is a great spot with some fun size slides. My six and seven year old uh, loved it. They thought it was a ton of fun. The slides are pretty good size. They're not tiny and there's a good amount of stuff for kids that age, but it's only for smaller kids. Our other nieces were a little bit bigger and they weren't even allowed to use the big slides over there. So it made it a little bit awkward for us that some of our nieces couldn't play there because they were too tall and they had to split up, but I can see why they do it. It's good for those kids to have their own place to play. Past that, you're gonna find Coral Cove, which is a really cool area for the smaller toddlers. We didn't really have any with us, so we didn't play over there very much, but it is definitely a great area for the littler kids. And now on to the fun rides. There are two main areas for slides. There's the group of slides near the Lazy River with the big Stingray water slide. The Stingray has their biggest funnel and it's a must do at least once because when you go up the slide and up the funnel, you definitely get a little bit of air time, which is a little pretty fun. And there are a few other tube rides on that side of things that are fun as well. And we did all of them in about, you know, a couple hours while we were there on our first day. Now they also have some single rider slides like the zigzag zebra and the Tanzanian twister. I got to know, these were a lot of fun, but they are fast. They are definitely not for little kids. If you uh, want something fun like that, they're definitely fun, but they are quick. I'm a strong swimmer, but when I dropped into the pool off the Tanzanian Twister, I was a little disoriented. Like the, the slide goes fast and they drop you in a deeper pool. So most of the slides are going to be uh, fun that are over there. But yeah, just a heads up on those single rider ones. Now, personally, my favorite section of the water slides is in the back behind the wave pool. The slides over here probably aren't as good as the ones on the other side, but there was no weights. It's like it's hidden behind the wave pool and just maybe less people go back there. But one of our favorite slides to go down with our whole group were the cheetah racers. All the kids from six to 16 liked the cheetah racers. So that was a fun one. 
Um, they also like the wave pool. So being on that side, sitting next to the wave pool, having those slides right there was definitely good for us. This side has some good tube rides and they have the fastest single rider slides. They've got the one with the opening where it just drops you. Now I did both of them and I gotta say, it was fun to do the crazy rides but it was mostly just getting a whole bunch of water splashed in your face. So, I mean, it wasn't an amazing time, but it was, it was fun. The next thing to cover is the lazy river. The lazy river goes around the lost lagoon pool and our kids had a lot of fun there. It's a relaxing lazy river that pushes you through and you know, you just kind of ride the current and the kids just liked playing in the current and having it push them around in a circle. So at some point during the day, the kids always wanted to go back to the lazy river. So that one's definitely a win. The Lost Lagoon is a pool with a bunch of basketball hoops. And we didn't spend too much time there because the girls weren't really interested in shooting basketball. But I could see it being a lot of fun for families that do like playing pool basketball more. The other area is the grotto area, which I didn't really see much of i did the water slide that was over there which is cool but we were mostly busy watching the kids so we never got to go to the adults only area so it could be fun the other thing that we didn't do was the flow rider but it looked like a popular attraction so that's probably another one that's worth checking out another thing to note that we almost missed was the hot tub the indoor outdoor hot tub it's over by the little kids section near coral cove and it goes outside and then on this cold Texas day, it was just amazing to sit in the hot tub outside and the, the steam was coming off the water and it was definitely one of the highlights for me. That was really cool. The last thing to cover in the water park is the cabanas. You can rent a cabana for a price to have your own space. So we went for one night and we did a few hours of the water park on a Friday and a few hours on a Saturday. So we didn't really need a cabana. We were talking about it, but we had a room you know so we had a room to go back to but if we were just going to come up for one full day and we were going to get there in the morning and stay there all day a cabana would maybe be a good choice almost like a substitute for having a hotel room and they have some cool ones with a hot tub in it and so it looked like fun but with that being said the cabanas weren't much cheaper than a hotel room so you may just want to get a hotel room the next thing is the arcade and it's called Tom Foolery. Now, the kids did have fun there, but for me, this was a miss. In my opinion, arcades aren't that nice and are just a racket to get you to spend too much money. Now, I will say this place was really nice, but it is designed to take all of your money. Now, we were joking that it's like a casino for kids. The one thing about arcades is that it's mostly uh, games to win tickets or prizes. And so most of the games here are all about tickets and prizes, not necessarily about, you know, racing games or, or playing stuff. There's just not that many of those. It's all about getting you to swipe the card to try to win more tickets. Now, this is a big moneymaker because, well, kids and adults spend a lot of money trying to grab a $2 stuffed animal or trying to acquire thousands of tickets to win cheap prizes. So if we want to break down the racket real quick when we're looking at the prizes and the amount of tickets you get, they've got a cry cut printer here for 60,000 tickets. Now for some frame of reference, we spent about $200 on coins and everything else, whatever, credits, and we got about 8,000 tickets. So if 200 bucks gets you 8,000 tickets, then you're looking at paying $1,500 for this thing that's on Amazon for $180. Seems like a racket, but it is what it is. These places are fun and kind of a racket. There are also rides, which I would definitely avoid. The cheap attractions just feel like things they're trying to package up to get more money out of you. They, they never really seemed worth it, like the cave maze, for instance. Uh, insider information. Cave of Mirrors is a complete racket. Paid 40 bucks for eight people. It took us 42 seconds to get through it. Total racket. So the kids had fun at the arcade, but I spent a lot more than I planned on and I would have liked to see more fun games. Not just games to try to win more tickets. I will say axe throwing was probably the coolest game and they do have a lot of new 
interactive games, so the games are newer, and that aspect of it is more fun. But again, I just felt like a relentless money grab in the arcade. The thing that looked like fun that we didn't do was the ropes course. We were ready to try it out, but the kids were just too tired after the water park in some arcade. So this does look like a fun experience for the kids, but it does look pretty small. It's not that big of an area. So I can't imagine it would take that long to get through. Now let's take a few steps back and we'll talk restaurants. And yes, I'm going to get to the room review at the end, that three bedroom room, but we gotta talk about the food first. At first look, we were excited to have good food options on site and that all inclusive feel of not having to leave the resort to get anything because there's a lot of different food options. 14 total, ranging from a nice steakhouse down to an ice cream and candy shop, right? Kind of all the above. And so we ate at b Lux Grill and Bar, which is right inside the arcade, which was very convenient. And the food was pretty good, not amazing, but good. And probably a little overpriced because the fact it was right in the middle of the arcade, location, location. But it was great to eat there and have the kids go right back out to having fun. The other place we ate was Pizzeria Sortinos. It's an Italian pizza place. And we wanted to eat at a restaurant, but it was closed. So we walked all the way down to the restaurant area and it was actually closed, which I get because it wasn't that busy, but they could have done a much better job in communicating what restaurants were open and what were closed. So we ended up just going to their like snack sand pizza area and getting some pizzas. We did get some pizzas and sandwiches and the sandwiches were really good. The pizza was a little doughy cheesy and greasy for my taste. And I was definitely a little let down on the food there. I would guess the other restaurants are pretty good, but I wouldn't expect any culinary greatness from any of them. They're a step up from amusement park food, but far from fine dining. Now for the hotel itself. So there's a really nice lobby, a big touchscreen kiosk that you can use to check in. The check-in process was okay. It was a little bit confusing. We had to run our card multiple times, but we figured it out. There was a little bit of a line to talk to someone. So it seems like there's a fair amount of people who still didn't figure it out. They have RFID wristbands that are your room key and your park pass. And you can set some of the wristbands to charge stuff to the room. And look, they're okay. It's kind of like a cheap version of Disney's Magic Bands, but there's some real issues with it. For us, we put them on our little kids and two of them lost them in the pool. And so for starters, it's a $50 charge to replace them, which seems a bit much considering you're putting these things on little children and having them swim around a pool. But on top of that, now my room key is floating around the water park. And not saying that they have any issues with it, but it just feels like it could be an issue to me. So the three bedroom presidential suite is huge. The pro is the room size, right? The size of it all. It had a cool little wraparound balcony that was really nice and plenty of room for the kids to run around. I will say though, it seemed too big. The living room was almost empty and it's like they stuck some furniture in there just to try to fill the space. It didn't really seem well thought out. We didn't love the fact there was no real kitchen. And when you pay that much for a big three bedroom, you would think they would have a kitchen in there that you could actually cook a meal, not just a microwave and a sink. It's one of our favorite things to do as a family when we get together is cook a meal. But again, I know they're trying to drive revenue for the restaurants, so I get it. But I just would think there would be something in there to cook with other than a microwave. The bedrooms were really good size, plenty of room in each of the bedrooms. Each bedroom had its own full bathroom. That was great. The primary bedroom had a big bathroom that looked nice, but had some real head scratchers. They have the toilet glassed in, so there's no privacy when you're doing your business. Add to the fact that you can't lock the doors with a bunch of kids running around. It just didn't seem too well thought out. The other thing is there's no hooks for wet bathing suits. You get back from the water park and change, and there's no hooks to hang anything. Really, really funny to me, but also a bit frustrating. So we had a great time at Kalahari. The most important thing is that the kids really did have a fun time. They loved it. I had plenty of reasons why I didn't love Kalahari, but overall, it's a great place to take the family. I think there's some really pretty easy things they could do to make it more enjoyable, but overall, they've made a very amazing space. If you like this video, 
check out some more. Hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you on the next video. Here he goes. Here he goes. Come on, man. Come on. What do we got? What do we got? That's a good grip. That's got to be money. That's got to be the one. That's got to be the one. Yes! Oh, Woo! What That's what I'm talking it. about. For you, baby. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> this just makes me feel so good. This makes me feel happy. This, this is happiness. Honey, honey, we got the Thor. We got the Thor. You can't sleep with him, though.